Welcome back to Jeeping for Beginners, folks. Once again, my name is Josh, and today we are talking about maintenance on the trail. When you're overlanding or spending more than a couple of nights out camping, one of the things that we all miss in the luxuries that we have in our life is a nice hot shower. So check this thing out. This is a portable on-demand hot water unit from Gasland Systems and you're going to be impressed with how easy it is to set up, how portable it is, and just how hot the water can get. So stick around. I think you're going to enjoy this. Welcome back to the channel, folks. Uh, like I said, today we are going to be talking about Gaslands portable hot water heater. Um, there are many different uses for this. If you've got a cabin in the woods and you want on-demand hot water in the cabin, you could use it for your RV. Hell, if you wire it right, you could even use it at your home for your indoor shower if you want to. But uh, we chose this unit because it's 100% portable. Now, here's what I mean by that is first, it does not require any hard wiring. So it is not permanently affixed to the vehicle. It actually runs off of two D cell batteries in order to ignite the propane and it runs off propane in order to heat the water. So these are things that can be very portable, especially when you're overlanding. So we wanted to definitely check this thing out. It is so easy to use guys, so easy to use that you would not believe it, okay? So first of all, everything that you see here is how it comes. Now it is available in multiple different colors. I chose red because I have a red theme going on with my Jeep. Um, but anyways, uh, it comes with the main gas line to run to your propane source. It comes with the shower head with the switch on it. Um, and it comes with the spot for the two D cell batteries. Now it doesn't come with the batteries obviously, because nothing ever does. So be sure to pick up batteries before you actually hit the trail. It also comes with multiple different types of fittings for your water supply. Now, in our case, we don't have a supply of water in or on the Jeep. Well, at least not yet. That is one thing that we are going to try to accomplish this year. So for the purposes of demonstrating this, we are using our garden hose from our house to supply water. Now, the unit itself does need to see water pressure. From what I understand in reading through the directions, it's a minimum of two and a half pounds of pressure of water coming into it in order for it to function properly. So obviously a garden hose is definitely gonna provide that for you. If you are gonna set this up as something to use in an RV or an off-road camper, um, trailer, or even in the back of your Jeep, uh, you're probably gonna need a water pump or at least a pressurized system that would allow it in order to recognize the water coming through. But that's neither here nor there. Now for ease of use, okay, the whole unit stays off and it stays off and inert the whole time you're not using it. But right on the handle, you've got the switch to turn the water on. The second you turn the water on, this thing lights the igniter and immediately starts raising temperature. It only takes about 30 seconds and you got, wow, actually less than 30 seconds, you actually have hot water coming out of here. How cool is that? And then when you're done, just flip the switch, it immediately shuts itself down, kills the flame, and it's over. You can't ask for anything simpler than that, right? So let me go into just a couple of the really cool little features that this thing has. So on your gauges that you have going on here, this one over here is going to control the gas flow. This one is going to control the water flow. But this one up here, a lot of people say that it controls the temperature. Um, not necessarily true. It's actually comparing the water temperature coming through to what you're saying the outside temperature is. So you see how there's a little snowflake here and sunshine here. If we were to turn this knob all the way over to the sunshine, it actually won't heat the water up nearly as much, especially if you want a cool shower on an extremely hot day while you're out. But by turning this thing over here and telling it that it's freezing cold outside and I want some heat, it's actually gonna turn the temperature up. Then you've got the actual temperature gauge. The unit is not on at the moment, so you can see that this is completely blank, but, 
if we turn it on just like that immediately in there the flame fires up starts heating up the water and then down here you can actually see well maybe you can't see hang on so now that i figured out how to create a shadow here for you guys you can see already at 86 88 90 degrees and it's heating up rapidly how cool is that now like i said when you're all done all you got to do is shut it off and the whole unit goes back to inert now we have picked up this unit because originally we thought it would just be as simple as on-demand water and we were going to have a shower when we took our expedition up to Colorado last year. However, because it doesn't have an internal pump and we didn't have a pressurized water system, we chose not to take it with us um, because there is a little bit more that we're going to have to build. So stay tuned for a future episode as I am going to put pressurized water system on the Jeep so that we have at least five to 10 gallons of water in order to run through this. And then when we're camping, we can take a shower, refresh ourselves and be ready to go for the next day. So guys, the reason why I wanted to point this out is a lot of people look at having onboard hot water systems as extremely expensive. Well, I've looked at multiple different types of units that are out there from all kinds of different companies. And yes, the ones that you hard pipe in, hard wire in, so on and so forth, those can get pretty pricey. This, on the other hand, is surprisingly inexpensive. And honestly, I think you'd be really happy with it, especially because again, it's portable. As you can see, I have it hanging on the side of the Jeep, but with this handle, we can hang it on a tree. We can mount it because there are mounts on the back if you want to mount it. And then when you're done with it, we can pack it up and store it away. So how cool is that? Anyways, folks, I just figured I'd share that with you. I am going to put a link down in the description below. If you guys want to check this out again, it's available in multiple different colors and something that I am very anxious to use in the very near future. So stick around. Like I said, this isn't going to be the last time you see this unit. Once again, my name is Josh and this is Jeeping for Beginners wishing you safe travels. So stay safe, happy Jeeping, and we will see you next time. All right, guys, so here's what we're going to do. The giveaways for 2024 are going to be teased in subscriber-only videos, which means you're going to have to subscribe to the channel in order to get the opportunity to win some cool Jeep stuff. So what are you waiting for? The button's right there. Go ahead. Subscribe. Do it. Do it. Do it.